let's say you need to use your documents IDs on your application, but you are not storing those IDs in the database. Angular Fire lets you find the IDs and add them to the objects in two different ways. For the first one, let's say we are just pulling a regular collection of items from the database with collection data. The quickest way to find our document's ID is using collection data's properties. Here, we can pass an extra property called ID field. And we can say this ID field is going to be ID. What this is going to do is it's going to add the document's ID to the object and it's going to use the key ID for it. When we save, you see that now we have the IDs in the list right here. This is the fastest way and you let Angular Fire do all of the work for you. And this should work for most people. The other way is if you need a little bit more control over the resulting object. Like for example, you want to add a prefix or something else to the ID. For that, instead of collection data, we are going to use collection changes. Collection changes is going to take our query as a parameter. Collection changes is going to return all of the document's metadata. So to get it to work the way we want to, we are going to pipe into this because this is an observable. And we are going to get an import map from RxJS operator. And in here we have access to the actual document data. And we have access to the ID from item dot dot ID. And here we would just need to return the ID and the data. And here when I refresh, you see that I have the IDs here. But when do you want to use this? Like I was saying before, when we might want to modify something about the ID or about any other property. So here, for example, I actually want to add, I don't know, maybe in our application we have some sort of prefix for the IDs, like something dash and then the real ID. Then what I added here, you see that we can actually see it inside of the application. 